Here's a list of every PC exploit to exist. Ransomware. This is malware that blocks you from accessing your data until you meet certain demands, such as paying off a ransom. Typically, the criminals gain access to your data and they encrypt your files. They will then demand a ransom in exchange for decryption, and they refuse to give it up until you pay. The Worm. This is a harmful program that resides in the active memory of your computer and duplicates entirely on its own. This makes worms incredibly difficult to get rid of because they can copy themselves across a network and infect other machines. So if you remove the entire worm from one machine, another machine on the same network might be able to transmit it back if that machine is infected. Once your system has a worm, they perform a variety of malicious activities, such as stealing information, changing or deleting files, installing backdoors, corrupting files, and introducing other malware. During the year 2000, there was an outbreak of a worm that was estimated to cost 10 to 15 billion US dollars to remove. Within just a few days, over 50 million computers had been infected, which is estimated to be about 10% of the world's computers. It was so bad, the Pentagon, CIA, and British Parliament decided to completely shut down their mail systems. And at the time, it was the world's most destructive computer-related disaster. Trojan Horse This is when a seemingly harmless and legitimate program harbors malicious code, with the intent of stealing data, deleting files, or giving the attacker backdoor access to the computer. They can take on the form of free music, free software, advertisement, and apps but hidden inside that software is a malicious program. The term is derived from the ancient Greek story of the city of Troy that fell because of the deceptive tactic of the Trojan horse. The virus. This is a piece of code that's disguised as something else that causes your computer to behave in an unexpected way, such as recording audio or video, corrupting applications, deleting files, reformatting your hard drive, crashing your system, sending spam emails, and much more. The virus spreads from one infected computer to another during the transmission of files. If a file that has the virus in it gets transferred and the other computer downloads it, then that computer now has the virus. Logic Bombs This is a piece of code that is intentionally inserted in software and it executes when triggered by a specific event. For example, you could open an app and it would cause your PC to crash. Or a programmer may hide a piece of code that starts deleting files, such as databases, should they ever be terminated from the company. Their termination would update the logs, which then would trigger the logic bomb and cause the database to start being deleted from the inside out. Spam. This is the use of email systems to send unsolicited emails to a large number of people in attempts to get people to reveal personal information to you, such as credit card numbers and bank account details. Spam usually is not a threat to the user unless they engage with the malware that's being sent to them. These are usually phishing attempts to prey on uninformed people who don't know any better than to interact with these emails, like poor old grandma. Distributed Denial of Service Attack, also known as DDoS. This type of attack utilizes something called a botnet, which is a group of infected computers that the hacker has control over. They then use this botnet to flood a target site, spiking their network traffic, making it so that regular users can't access it. This essentially makes their network unusable to users because of an overwhelming amount of traffic that's flooding the server. Sometimes it's used as a joke, other times it's used to send a message or demand data, and even push a political agenda. They can lead up to 10 years in federal prison and up to a $500,000 fine. Advanced Persistent Threat, or APT. This is when an intruder gains access to a network and stays there undetected with the intention of stealing data over weeks or months. Oftentimes, this type of exploitation is aimed at governments, companies, and political activists as a means to gather intelligence on individuals and groups of individuals of interest. Attackers are able to penetrate into the cloud and mobile infrastructure to eavesdrop, steal, and tamper with data, and sometimes gain access to a physical location to enable network attacks. Zero Day Attack. This takes place before the security community or the software developer becomes aware of and repairs of vulnerability, so the hacker is taking advantage of an unknown or unaddressed security flaw in the computer software. The term zero day refers to the fact that the developer has zero days to fix the flaw because the hacker can already use it to access vulnerable systems. A good example of this is that a casino's database was hacked through a smart fish tank thermometer. This thermometer was connected to the network that everything else was connected to, and therefore served as an open door for hackers to access data they were not supposed to be able to get into. The company had not considered any security threat in this area, and therefore it is a zero day attack. And that's a list of every basic PC exploit that exists. They all typically fall under one of these categories. If you enjoy computers and algorithms, then leave a like and help me out on that YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching.